Yehova Mulak Olam Olamad Yehova Mulak Yameni Rakis Yehova Gadola Makarian Tios Yehova Erdanai Yehova Elohim Kurios Tios Pentecretan Kurios Tios Pistos Elde et Yehova El Emuna Yehova Ibaslian Kurios, Otios, O Pentecreta. Baslios, Baslion, Kai Kurios, Kurion. Yehova the Bar Halal, Elohim the Bar Halal. Yehova Elohim, Gadol Gadol Gebura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon is in Ton Kurion. Kurion in Mahagion Pentecreta. Gadol Gadol Gebura Mora Rosh Nasa Elohim Elohim Ille Ilaye Shalot Yehovah Malak Yehovah Malak Olam Olam Ad Yehovah Elohenu Yehovah Ekad Gadol Gadol Gebura Yehovah Ishmal Kam Yehovah Shamma El Nakum Yehova, El Nakum Yapa. Natsak Israel, La Sheker. Gava, Gava. Triembos Yehova. Isus Christos, Pantacreta. Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Zoan Logan, Ogar Tautios. Dulas, Desmios, Despotes, Dikai Sune in Isus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa, Pantacreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Derek, Emunabakar, Mishpat, Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkenu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them, who love to walk breath by breath, in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. The sooner the better we realize the dark days of this apostasy. The maximum time what we are spending. It has to make our minds to look back or concentrate back in these apostasy days. How well we could be organized in the standards of knowing the will of God the Father in this life. The greater the days of apostasy, the greater the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit to make known the truth, to learn the truth, or to make to realize and understand the great and unique valuable things of the word of Lord God. Because greater the darkness, greater the concentration it ought to be. The concentration to completely rely upon the word of Lord God. 
the concentration to completely survive as per the will of Lord God. Therefore, dear brethren, if God the Father has to recompense you back according to the cleanliness of your heart and according to the righteousness, the way how we are going to deal with Him, the sooner the better it is if we reflect in our thinking the knowledge of Bible doctrine in this life. As you think and reflect and you put upon to the word of Lord God, so it will be better for us to think and to reflect upon our body what, um, what the Lord God has designed for us to really use this body in the midst of such days, great days of apostasy. Greater the days of apostasy, greater we are having the chance of making the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be manifested to these people. The greater they have been occupied in the evil times, what we are calling, because we have been in the intensified stage of the angelic conflict and Satan loves to devour whom it may as a roaring lion. So, realizing these things, we are having now in the church age this great privilege. The privilege of exercising the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to the highest. Greater the days of apostasy, greater we are having the chance of manifesting the revealing ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in this life. So to illustrate that, we have a word for us in Matthew chapter 7, which says in verse number 25, emphasizing, The man will be counted wise if he listens to the teachings of the word of Lord God and if he does according to the teachings of the word of Lord God. He will be considered to be as a wise man. And who will be the wise man? The word is very, very important in verse 24. It is not Sophia, because usually the Greek word or the English word wise will be translated from the Greek word called as Sophia. But here it is not Sophia. The word what we look over here, it has been called as phronomas or phren. So, the word phren or the faculty of perceiving or understanding, it is nothing but to be mindful of not your own interests. You are so wise enough now, you are mindful about the interests of Lord God the Father to be manifested through you. So that's very simple for the word what we can call, though these are the days of great apostasy, Lord God the Holy Ghost ministry will be more evident, more clear, more accurate. Greater the times of apostasy, greater the accuracy of becoming the word of Lord God of becoming the manifestation of the teachings of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Greater, because you are now called to be considered as wise. And what are the standards of you to become wise? Being mindful about the Lord's plan. Being mindful about the Lord's opinion. It is not you any longer, but it is Lord God, the Holy Ghost. As he said in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, your body is not your own. You have been bought up with a great, pro great price. Therefore, it is no longer your own. You are wise enough. Phronismas, it is not Sophia, the word which has been translated for wise there. And what is the meaning of that word phronismas or phren? Your faculty of perceiving or understanding, it is mindful about to think about the standards of Lord God. And in these days of apostasy, if Lord God the Father is so specific in dealing with the church age in such standards of his word, then why is it we are not able to become that which could be the best plans and the best means for Lord God's execution. Why we are not able to understand it? Why we are not able to be the standards of 
prudent why we are not able to realize that we have to be learned enough or why we are not able to become saga why because you're not realizing we are in the intensified stage of this angelic conflict the greater the apostasy greater we are having the revolution of lord god the holy spirit tapping his feet to teach us his word so that now we don't have time for our own lusts we don't have time for the silly stupid behavior of life patterns what we're going to execute before unbelievers we don't have time for our own lustful patterns of the old sin nature to be executed we don't have time because we are now called to be purchased with the lord's gracious property or what to use the word we have been redeemed with a great price which we cannot pay back so entire life goes back to be the standards of becoming the word of lord god our standards of becoming the will of lord god but what we are doing today we don't have time for vanity we don't have time for stupidity we don't have time for our own misery to be inculcated at the cost of neglecting the grace of lord god in becoming the will of lord god or the image of lord god to be formed in us you have been purchased you have been redeemed you have been given valuable assets you have been told to be the ambassador of lord god but you don't have time for the stupid things which this man they're concentrating now the stupidity of this life and wherein they're concentrating today they're not looking for the great right revolution of lord god the holy spirit holy spirit they're still concentrating to go deeper into deeper into the darkness of this world the greater they spend the time in darkness <laughs> the greater they think they have really achieved something great in this life but the word of lord god says fools these are because they're using the valuable grace of lord god in vanity So, dear brethren, use the privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins through rebound. What Lord God the Father has preserved and kept for us on today's date in it, we will pass to the praise of His glory. We shall come back and continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great and unique word of my Lord. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming into the grace of the Lord to learn the truth. We don't deserve or ask anything on this earth, O Lord, except to reflect your glory to his people. In your matchless, marvelous, wonderful, saving grace till to the dying grace, you have given us everything to enjoy on this life, so that we could come back to the realization, greater may be the time of apostasy, It is also a great time for us to completely concentrate the revealing ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and to be that wise man as Matthew 7:24 emphasizes to build upon your teachings to build upon your word and to perform your will. So Father, once again giving one more day in our life on this earth. We pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit to enlighten to challenge and to bless us and to labor for the food which perisheth not. rather than laboring for the food which perisheth so father as we study these things which things you have prepared and kept for us on today's state in every day past we pray the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy ghost to enlighten to challenge and to bless us by this message in christ's name we ask our lord amen so dear brethren he says over here in lamentations 116 comparing to the standards of what should have been to the people of the entire world so they became the standards of 
dissolution because the enemy was more great in figure. So here referring back to this Lamentations 1, we find the word which teaches to us in verse number 16 to understand what this man is all about on this earth the journey what he is able to become. As Christ our Lord our God said, we have been called to be the palliative wonders of his glory on this earth. But this man has left out to be the palliative wonders of his glory. And what he has become? He has become the stupid personality rather than becoming the word of Lord God to this people. That's what he says over here. Israel was called, it is in Lamentations 2.15. It is not Lamentations 1.16, but it has to be in Lamentations 2.15. So he says over here, All that pass by clap their hands at thee, they hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? You know, these words may seem to be something in the Hebrew, but in the pictographical representation, what he writes over here, this city which they are saying, consummation of loveliness and elation to all the earth. You know, what is this word, elation? Joy. And you know what is that word joy in the pictographical representation? It has the meaning meant to say, in spite of not just having pressure upon you, but double pressure upon your body. So if the church, if the Israel had double pressure, now in the midst of this darkness where the fallen angels followed by this Ed, which knows that the time is short where it is trying to roar like a roaring lion because it's called roaring like a roaring lion and subdue as many as it can or squench as many as it can. In the midst of such time, what a great joy we have to be, not just to be a elation. Elation is a very simple word which could be used for the Old Testament category. We have to be something far greater than elation to God. Because in spite of such pressure, we have been told now in the church age, if Lord God be for us, then who could be against us? Because of 1 John 4.4, 4, therefore we need to tell when greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world, then why is it we are failing in the process of making the word of God to be thoroughly preached? Why is it we are failing to become the principle what has been stated for us in Philippians 1, 6 through 8 or Colossians 1, 24 through 29? If the word for the Jerusalem people it has been said, elation, joy against double pressure, there may be pressure inward and outward. Inward pressure, we look in the book of Isaiah, the way how they go to drunk and they fail to evangelize the world. The outward pressure, the other end you have the Gentiles. The God has given them such sort of a great deliverance beginning from the people of the time of Exodus till to the last time when has established King David afterwards also. If they have been found faithful line of genealogy for King David, they would have really established the kingdom as per the demands of the word of Lord God, but the people's heart was not been prepared. That's what we find the summer in Second Chronicles chapter 20 in verse number 33. There also if you would look the word prepared, it meant to say they don't have the vigor and valor like a grammatious level of thinking. They have lost it. If you would look that in Second Chronicles chapter 20 in verse number 33, he says the heart of the people was not prepared. So, how be it the high places were not taken away, Second Chronicles 20, 33, for as the people had not prepared, what is the meaning of prepared? They should grow up like a grammatias in the vigor and valor. So the first thing, inward pressure, when there is no proper exposition of the word of Lord God. How to illustrate that? We find in First Kings chapter 18. 
the great work what Elijah does on the Mount Carmel. Here he says in verse number 30, Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired. You know, the repairing work is not being done. The word Rafa is not being done. The word of Lord God is the only Rafa for you, the only health for you. But that repairing work is not being done today for us. The pastor teachers have failed to repair the things pertaining to the word of Lord God in this church age. When there is no proper repairing work in the word of Lord God, then quite obviously you fail. Why you have been given the word of Lord God? 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, as well as followed by 2 Timothy 4, 1 and 2, we have been reading. All scripture, theomastas, beneficial, profitable, for what? The word says, number one, for doctrine, didaske, teaching. 2 Timothy chapter 3, the dying declaration of Apostle Paul in his great epistle. If today's people would wake up to understand these things, we'd be really very happy. It has been given for profitableness, o felimas, meant to say advantage for profit, to accumulate great profit, to accumulate great gain. Who will let go great gain in the business? If you're investing 10%, if you're able to get a return of 100%, would you let go that profit? You would say, no, it is 10 times the investment what you got. And the same thing is said, you're having a life being given by God the Father of eternity through the saving work of Christ on the cross, by faith alone in Christ alone. Don't let it go for foolish things. Make it up to be 100% of profit, 100% of margin. So that your entrance could be great, as it says in Second Peter chapter one, verse three through thirteen. To faith add virtue, knowledge, with long patience, with brotherly kindness of your love. If you have been looking upon these things, you are not in the standards of blind or unfruitable things. He says this man is very well far away. He looks upon the visions of mystery and doctrine. Is not blind. Therefore, what does his entrance be? His entrance will be 100% margin. That's what he says in Second Peter 3. His entrance will be great. When he's coming to the presence of Lord God the Father, his entrance will be superb. And that's what he says over here. Your margin, for the sake of your margin, Ophelias, advantage you have been given this great word of God. Second Peter chapter 1 in verse number 3 and following, particularly if you come back to verse number 8, he said, For if these things be in you and abound, what it has to be? It has to be naso, to superabound, to exist in abundance, to be augmented, to be great, to be in the standards of increase. So if these are abounding in you, they make that you shall neither be barren, that meant to say what? Unfruitful. So you don't have time for leisure thing. That's what he said. You know, every day is so precious for us in this church age. Though the Ecclesiastes one, he writes, there is a time for everyone in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. For everything under the sun, there is a time. But now you don't have the time. Therefore, you have been told to redeem the time in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because the kind of ketesis, the quality that has been designed for the church age, is something superb and unique. It is not like the Old Testament saints. Maybe they can get back only on certain few of the ministry called as endowment. But we have now the ministry called as enlightenment of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Therefore, every breath is precious. Every breath is gracious. Every breath is where you have to be a man called to be wise, not so far as was we look in uh, Matthew 7, 24, but you have to be a man called to be friend of Fornismas. Thinking all the time, Lord's opinion. Thinking all the time, Lord's desire. Thinking all the time, Lord's will. Thinking all the time, Lord's plan to be fulfilled. You don't have time for your freedom or your laboring in the sense to say, now I'm having some leisure time. No, dear brethren, if you're relaxed, just imagine how many souls will be perished. That's what we read in Matthew chapter 13 in the parable of tares and wheat. When you labor went to sleep, when you labor went to rest, this is the work of the devil. They came to sow. What? The tares. 
And what was the result of the tears if you would find? It resulted in the standards what you can look for the tears. Zizania, the Greek word, it meant to say they are exactly of the same style, exactly of the same growth, exactly of the same length, except when it is the fruit, you would come to know the difference between the color. If this is gold, that will be some sort of black or brown. You don't even understand the difference. This is what the harvest of the believers will be. The God the Father has given you for your profit entrance into 100%. You know, you're really not able to understand the privilege of this mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in this church age. You're really not able to understand about that. The privilege that has been given for us in this church age is so great and unique. That the church age when it has been begun from the day of Pentecost till the day of rapture and whichever generation that would be really available to see the rapture of the Lord God not seeing the tasting or the death. Really these generations from the time of AD 30 begin on the day of Pentecost till the day we don't know when is the rapture. It is really a very very eulogetas blessed one of the spiritual standards of the heavenly teaching because you are having now the mental Lord God the Holy Spirit. It is not just a human being, though it may be in the form of an apostle or a pastor teacher or an evangelist, it is purely the work of Lord God the Holy Spirit and Lord God the Holy Spirit cannot preach through them if they are not sanctified and well prepared for the work of Lord God to be executed. And that's where these people are ending up in rotten standards of living and teaching. They're really not able to fear or tremble at the word of Lord God. <laughs> Every breath is a precious. You don't have a time for leisureness. You cannot have the time free from labor. You cannot be having laziness. Because you have been said, if you are not able to look upon these things mentioned in Second Peter 1 eight, the things which have been called over here, the mathematical formula, what we read from verse number 3, according to as his divine power that hath given unto us, that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge, the word knowledge is epinosis knowledge, of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by this you might be partakers of the divine nature. What you are now, you are partakers of the divine nature. And then, having this partner or associated with the divine nature, you having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, you end up simply the how you get up into corruption because of your lust. And then he said, beside this, give all diligence at your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, to your knowledge temperance, temperance patience, patience godliness, godliness brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness charity. And if these things be in you and abound, that is what if they are augmented, if they have been increased in you, then he says, you shall neither be barren. That meant to say what? You don't have time for stupidity in this life. The stupidity running around the world in 80 days, the stupidity spending your time in vanity, or in simple words, the stupidity to stay back that you're not still mature. The mature standards, what you can look in, in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, what Ezekiel writes to us to emphasize, the summary or what is the fate of all mankind designed by Lord God. He said, let go all stupid things, fear God and keep his commandments, tremble at his word, become disciples to his word, because you have a lot many things to learn, you have a lot many things to understand. Fear God. And the people are not able to understand what is the fate of mankind designed, for, designed by Lord God for this stupid man. He said in simple words, in summary, fear God. And keep his commandments, guard his commandments. Because whatsoever work you have done, it will be brought to in light in a judgment, whether it will be good or bad. Whatever stupidity of work you have done on this earth, every second, every second you have been taken, every breath you have been taken in your thought, in your motivation, in your desire, you have been taken by the blueprint of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, which resides in you. 
and we should be the marvelous creations of all time in kinecatesis of the church age. The word kale, the word ale kinecatesis. But spiritual species, spiritual species of a great quality that did not exist earlier. But stupidly, you people are dying like human beings, he states in Psalms 82. You have been given to be like gods. You have been given to rule like a prince. But you're dying out like stupidly like human beings who have been worried about what to eat, who have been worried about what to drink, who have been worried about what to wear, who have been worried about all being mindful of their own opinions. But they're never mindful to be wise enough to think upon the standards and the teachings of my Christ or desires of my Lord. They're never mindful about the word of Lord God in their life. Never. And yet, God the Father gives you one more chance in these darkest days of apostasy. Greater the darkness of this apostasy, greater the revolution of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. People are so blinded in this world today, they do not even become to realize if you are not a disciple, you cannot be called as a Christian. If you don't take up your cross and come every day to learn the word of Lord God, you are not worthy. You are not even worthy to account your standards of life on this earth. You are not at all worthy. And yet what you are finding today, people are thinking, If they could impact upon their body, the post-mental attitude courses, they can really live a successful life. <laughs> they can really show forth the elation of joy. But you cannot show forth the elation of joy, dear brethren, until and unless you have Bible doctrine circulating in your brain. Bible doctrine guiding you, Bible doctrine directing you, Bible doctrine leading you. If you don't have that, you have absolutely, you have been absolutely failure. Whatsoever be the standards of your thinking, you may think, I will be great by thinking this, I'll be great by looking that, I'll perform this by looking into that. Just let go your stupid vanity of imagination in your mind. You cannot have that. It is Bible doctrine that makes the difference. If you don't have the word of Lord God, it's a better time for you to gather in the word of Lord God and reflect your thinking as per the teachings of Lord God because you're spending your time in Argos, in stupidity. There is no time for you to become barren. You have to be productive. Have to faith, have virtue, virtue, knowledge, patience, long temperance, goodliness, godliness, brotherly kindness and love. If you have these things, he said, you cannot be barren. And you know what does he say now? Why does he say that you cannot be barren? Because he emphasizes the second word. You cannot be unfruitful. That is, without fruit. And in where in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the epinosis knowledge. But therefore he said, he that lacketh these things, the one who is far away from these things, the one who is not able to look upon these things, he is called to be blind. He is tuplas. What a man? He is physically, mentally blind. He has been proud enough. He has been puffed up in his haughtiness. He has been such a rendering fool. He says, who wants to become, to look upon the heavenly standards? Because he says now, we are just happy coming weekly once to the church. We are just happy to attend the sermons monthly once in the church. Or come back and take in the partaking of the Lord's table. Or this or that, paying some tithes, standing in the choir and singing the songs. We are just happy by this. That's what he said. You are puffed up. You are blind. And a mentally blind cannot lead another blind. 
you know, what a valuable grace of God which has been given for us from the day of Pentecost till the time of completion of the canon of Scripture. Lord God, the Holy Ghost showed many signs and wonders to these people to believe in the Lord. But afterwards, after the completion of the canon of Scripture and assembling that into one language, what we have now, from particularly from the 15th century, almost all 10 centuries have been lost from AD 96 when we get into this fifth, when we get into this 1611 KJV first version in the Bible of English. It's almost all 1500 years been lapsed. You know, what a marvelous piece of glory of grace is God the Father bestowed upon us. You have been in the Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That meant to say what? That every facet of the soul of your body should think Bible doctrine. Every breath should be associated with the opinion of the word of Lord God, the will of Lord God to be executed. What he might think if we do this, what he might think if we don't do this. And what is the purpose of our life if we don't fulfill his desire? <laughs> you know, we used to always think whenever you fall in love with a girl, they would come back to summarize and say, saying that what man is a man if he is not able to fulfill the desires of that woman, not just in the science of physical sex, but the standards of soul. The facets of the soul being synchronized, the mentality, the evolution, the emotion, the norms and standards, the consciousness. If there is no first coalescence of the soul, even dogs, when they have meat, they can come back to produce puppies in the experiment of call to be in the heat. That any idiot, any knucklehead can do who has normal biological urge. So I would simply say, what a man is if he's not able to fulfill the desires of a woman. What for worth it is if a man he is if he's not able to fulfill the desires of a woman. Now the thing should be to the church. What a believer is if he's not able to fulfill the desires of Lord God in his life. To know the pain of Lord God, to know the will of Lord God, to perform the glory of Lord God, to understand the great things, what he said, as long as I live or as I live for truth. The great pain in Numbers 14.21. As I live, there is no need to swear him. He is the self-existing one. His word is enough for us. Only the fools can say, Lord, I have trusted your word, do not put me to shame. There is no one on the face of the earth who could be put to shame by trusting his word. It is your unbelief that you have been putting yourselves, claiming the promises of God to be saying it is not useful, it will not work. Your unbelief. But there is no way on the face of the earth or in any way in the heaven to say for you that you trusted his word and you ended up in shame. It is purely your unbelief. Because his word is eternal. Heaven and the earth will vanish off, but his word abideth forever. There is no need for my Lord God the Father to swear by himself and say, As truly as I live, the earth shall be filled with the pallid wonders of his glory. There is no need to tell that. As I swear, I live, as I live, I swear, though no need to tell, because his word is enough. It is purely our unbelief not to believe his word. We are proving we are not worthy. We are proving that, Lord, we are not having a character to rely upon your word. And you're proving you're put to shame. That you don't believe the promises of Lord God. You don't believe to do the will of Lord God. You're not here to perform the marvelous glory of Lord God. You're not able to do that. So he says over here, You will be blind, proud. But he that lacketh these things, the one who is not having these things, or to be ready in store. If he doesn't have these things, he said he is blind to flaws. He is mentally blind. And what does he do? He cannot see far off. This is the word which I want. The word called to be mupazo. It is a origin from the word called to be musterion. 
because he doesn't come to look upon with his own eyes what is this marvelous mystery of Bible doctrine, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. In Ephesians 3, you look the summary of the church where they come to learn the word of Lord God. In Philippians, he said that the gospel has already been spread. Therefore, Lord, you are my witness and you know the compassions I have towards these people. Therefore, he says now, in Colossians 1, that every believer should be presented in the presence of Lord God the Father, perfect and complete in all will, in all wisdom of his life. Therefore, he says over here, Mupazo, he's far away from Mustorian, followed by the word called to be Aptolomai. He cannot see far off. He cannot see the mystery doctrine. You know, what a stupid life is yours. If you don't come to learn the word of Lord God, if you don't come to look upon the mystery doctrine of the church age, if you don't come to look upon the standards of the mind of Christ, you know, do you think your life is anything worthy? Just simply calculate your life is not worthy for anything. It could be encountered to say it's useless. And some lives you can find today in the world, <laughs> if needed at the cost of killing their own parents, if needed at the cost of deceiving Lord God because he's invisible, said, though don't mind to grieve us culture wax or to deceive Lord God the Father's will and mission in their life that has just been outdated for them. That plan to wait upon the Lord, that plan to think upon the Lord's mind, that plan to consider the Lord's will, that is just God, that is very far away. If this invisible God, God only is not properly respected in their lives, then just imagine the trends of the present apostasy. If needed, killing their own parents and trying to execute the desires of their life is not a big deal with that. You're finding such generations today in the pulpits. You're finding such generations in the world, in your own families. Who cares what Lord God thinketh? Who cares what Lord God want? Who cares what is the desire of this or desire of that? As far as me, I am selfish. I just want to end up my life. Whether you give permission or not, whether it's your volition or not, I will just execute my last to be fulfilled. You know, but the word of Lord God calls just not knowing the will of God, but executing the will of God to such an extent to know the mystery doctrine of the church is to be occupied in that. But if people are not even knowing the word of God, as Colossians 1 emphasizes, to preach the word of God, even the mystery doctrine of the church age. Even the mystery of the church age. Have you been ever noticing on that? On in return, what you're trying to do? Just look, your lives are anathema, dear brethren. You think you're coming to pour down like a living libation unto the Lord, but Lord God doesn't take it as an accepted one. Because you're constantly grieved, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You're constantly squelched, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You haven't been what has been desired by Lord God to be on this earth. So all of these things will lead for you to realize that you are not able to perform the desires of Christ to be executed on this earth. You're not able to live. You've been designed by Lord God to know the pale wonders of His glory. You're designed by Lord God to understand the marvelous wonders of His mystery. You're designed to execute your life as per the opinions of Christ executed in you. You're designed for that. And not for anything else, you have been designed for that. But you know what you're emphasizing your life if you would look? You're simply found 
that the valuable grace of God is spent in vanity, the youth is being wasted upon the young. But looking upon the time, you should be mature ones, mature ones. Mature ones to simply learn the understanding of the summary while you're in youth, carry the yoke of the burden of the Lord. While you're in a mother's womb, let your parents be godly ones. Let them teach to you the word of Lord God. That's what 2 Timothy 3.15 is all about. Because I've been given this word of God for your advantage. To make your life not just only to be as an entrance, but to be as a double entrance. An entrance of 100% margin by looking wise unto salvation. That's why the scriptures have been given for you, he says. Right from your mother's womb, your profound stage, till to the age of you grow up. From the, from the age of your youth, where you have been called. You know, for example, right from the mother's womb, Jeremiah or Paul being kept apart. When he comes to the age of 20, before the age of 20, Jeremiah has been called. What for? He has been ordained him to be a great prophet to many nations. So what he is now in the church age, the day when you have been born in Christ, the day you have been born again in the Lord by your, by your parents to look upon the gospel and teaching you, you have been really called not just to be a prophet, but you have been called to be like a God to these people. To whom the word of Lord God comes, he said they are guards to these people. And you are a guide for them. And moreover in this church age, what a marvelous spirit of glory is that. It's something superb. It's something brilliant. It's something extraordinary. You are not able to imagine. You're not now in the ministry of the angels. You're not now in the ministry of the prophets or apostles. You are now directly under the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And if Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the one who's a creator right from the beginning till to the end... What great power you would learn in the times of such great apostasy. Just think, dear brother. And by the time looking, you should be mature enough. By the time looking, you should be well enough to understand each and everything in the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. Any success, any failure. Not to become a failure and end up in drunkard states of your life. Concentrate on the word of God. You have now the word of Lord God. Take it as a challenge because people are perishing without knowing the word of Lord God. Let them become the will of Lord God. Teach them in whichever arena you are. Guide them to save as many as you can for the marvelous glory of Lord God. No matter whatever it is, go back to the performance of Lord God's glory in this life. Be mature enough. Be available to behold and to look the great mystery life which has been given for us. Man is in search of solution in the sense of unbelieving sect. But Bible gives you what is the purpose of your birth. Bible teaches to you what is the purpose of your right way. Bible teaches to you where you will end up if you believe in Christ. If you don't believe in Christ, where you will end up. And who is creator of man? Bible gives you in detailed explanation the purpose of why God makes man. And you should be that to teach others. Looking upon the time, you should be the people who communicate that to others. But what a sad story it is for us to look that you people are not able to teach that. Not able to realize that. And simply wasting your life in vanity, vanity, vanity. Just look what vanity under the sun. If your body is not being disciple oriented design, then whatsoever you do, it's vanity. And above all that in this earth under the sun, you have vanities of vanities. If there is one program designed by Lord God, that which is good, though agreeable to the sight of Lord God, you have one infinite programs or 100 infinite programs which could easily drag you out from the fear and the burden of the word of Lord God to conform to his image and to carry his cross and to become his will to this people. You have so many programs. Come to Bible class busy. The time of two hours, 40 minutes in your day that doesn't belong to you, you need to come to the church. Every day carrying your cross, Proverbs 8, 34 to 36, the people who are really waiting upon the doorpost of the temple gate of the Lord of God to learn his doctrine. These are the blessed ones in Christ. 
They should come every day to know the word of Lord God. They should come every day to do the will of Lord God. If they don't do it, they're lost forever. And if you don't perform the marvelous glory of Lord God, you're gone forever. Because every day, two hours, 40 minutes, that time doesn't belong to you. You're robbing from the Lord God. And when you're robbing that from the Lord God, you don't have any prosperity in this life, any peace in this life. Though you may say, I will go and have joy. Though, I, though you will say, I have a lot of peace through this experiment or that experiment, you know, experiments of what all this Solomon did. A woman, wealth and the standards, what you can call as weaponry. What all experiments you can have, you can make it up. With wealth, your education, with wealth, your standards of weaponer, with wealth, you can have many things. And the enjoyment with your woman. Having children, building houses, breaking houses. Learning some horticulture. What do you do with that? Every day time of you belongs to God. Two hours, 40 minutes. If God the Father has given you one more day, one more chance, wake up to carry your cross and come to the church where the word of Lord God has been taught every day. Not having these gimmicks, not having these sherots of oratory, but come back and learn what the word says in Exegomai. Come back and learn the word, what the word says in the Greek and Hebrew and have your own decisions or having your own conclusions erected by the counsels of the word of Lord God and look into your own life in the mirror of the word of Lord God and correct yourselves and be qualified to reach Christ in the heaven. Look into such life. Not the stupidity of this. Look into that life of reality. Look into that life of truth. That reality which has been given for you to know only by the word of Lord God because your soul, the Dhamma, blood, what you can call, it reflects or goes back to respond only to the doctrine Every thought that goes on to be in your blood pumping you and motivating you. It will respond only to the word of God. Therefore David says in 2 Samuel chapter 22 in verse number 25. Lord God has recompensed him back. The Hebrew word shuv. The thought process that goes to reflect upon your body, body you have, when you have the thought process as per the word of Lord God. If a thought process is divine viewpoint, you have a great life, great purpose with this flesh. If you don't have the thought process of the word of Lord God in you, you don't even realize we have been kept alive. You don't even understand why God the Father has designed for us such a great life. You would just think like the mortal soul or living soul. You will never become the quickening spirit in Christ. Never. But I have been designed to become a quickening spirit in the Lord. And what is that quickening spirit in the Lord? Read that. Zo poeon numa. And what is that quickening spirit? Your life is quickening spirit. Your life is not just like this living soul of ordinary people. What to eat, what to drink, what to wear, how is our life, what we shall be. If we don't have this, what we shall be. If we have that. Life is something far greater, dear brethren, called to be quickening spirit. That's what we find over here in First Corinthians chapter 15. When we have been called the new man in Christ, it has been made to look that we are 
no longer the same standards of this earth but you have been called now to be something of a quickening spirit first corinthians 15 45 and so it is written the first adam was made a living soul you know that's what he says in matthew 7 24 if you are wise enough you will look upon the great pile of wonders of his word you're wise enough you will be still revealed the great things in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit if you're wise enough you will come back to say lord thank you for one more day teach us your great deep things of the word of lord god i just don't want to be like this living soul of the first adam but i want to be like the last adam called to be the zopoeon or the one who goes to be self-existence or existence in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit that which could be for the true independent existence to live eternal life in the spirit of god so put it on a new ma. That's why you will be all available to Lord God to say, Father, we are thankful for one more day. Why? Make us to be in the last Adam process. Make us to conform to his image. Make us to become the quickening spirit. Make us to become Zopoe on Numa. Help us not just to be like this living soul. You know, there is a difference. The word living is also called to be Zao. The strong code number given over here is 2198. But when you come back to quickening, it is also followed by the word called to be Zao life, double two, two six or triple two two, followed by 4160, meant to say po -e -o, which becomes an independent existence of that. So here, dear brother, you look. He says, the first Adam was a living soul. The last Adam is called quickening spirit. And what we are having today? <laughs> we are not becoming the quickening spirit. And why we aren't becoming quickening spirit? Because we are not interested to look <laughs> the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which demands to be holy, holy, holy. The mentoring minister of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which constantly asks you to be mindful about his words, mindful about his commandments, mindful about his way of life on the midst of these unbelieving standards of this world. But you want to enjoy the world. You want to enjoy the lustful patterns of your old sin nature. You want to enjoy and taste the sin. By missing the mark of the Lord God. You just want to enjoy your life. Oh, how stupid it is. Though the word of Lord God says you should be like a quickening spirit. The last Adam is your goal. The first Adam is gone. Who is it? It is the last Adam. Therefore he said, If you lack these things, then you are blind. You cannot see afar off and have forgotten that in which he was purged, from which he was been cleansed, his old sins. Therefore he says in verse 10 in Second Peter 1, Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. The word diligence meant to say paudiza, endure, be great enough for what? Your calling classes for the divine invitation given to you and your election called to be eklego, the act of God's free will by which before the foundation of the world he decreed his blessings to certain persons. The decree made from choice by which he determined to bless certain persons through Christ by grace alone. So make that your election sure. The act of picking out, the act of choosing. So be available to Lord God, as people would say. I am not available, so just be in the standards of making in the process of making me to be texting the messages. If you could find some of the status of these people when they keep for WhatsApp. I am available 24 hours, some guy would say. Some guy would say, I am not available. So here also he says, picking out. 
Make sure you're available to Lord God. Make sure your name has been recorded in the heaven. Therefore, he said, give diligence to Po'eo. You're calling the word called to be divine invitation so that you can embrace salvation and election called to be eklego, where God the Father can pick you up. One will be there, one will be left over. Though we read that in the tribulation time, that's picking up. So, Eklego, picking out, and then he said, picking up and making your calling and election, the word called to be Babayas, meant to say, sure, metaphorically it has been called for trust or trustworthy, stable. It is like a steadfastness. It's for sure. You know, what a great thing is that, to be calling, making your calling and election sure. <laughs> making to be absolute available to the will of Lord God the Father. He said, make up your calling and election sure. And if you do these things, you shall never fall. And the word never fall over here meant to say, you will never stumble, you will never make an error. You will never be into misery, becoming wretched one. Therefore, what does he say, dear brethren? For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly, plausias, richly, into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Your entrance shall be ministered, or your entrance shall be abundant. There will be entrance into the ministry of abundantly, into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent. Therefore, he says, I will not be careless. That's the real duty of the pastor teacher, not and never to be careless, even in single iota and carrera. He has to cross-check, dig and take and teach the word of Lord God. He cannot be negligent. It's really a great gift given for him to preach the word of Lord God. He doesn't deserve, he doesn't have it by virtue, he doesn't been given to pass down from one generation to another generation as it goes down from fathers to forefathers. No. First of all, having this bona fide gift or having this election sure before the foundation of the world, what we call over here in this election, your calling that God the Father has given for every believer to have that calling to be election sure. First of all, it's a great grace if God the Father has chosen us to be there. And above all, it's a great marvelous grace which we don't deserve to be having this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher. Then how much more thankful we ought to be to the Lord. How much more grateful we ought to be the Lord. How much more we have to be to the process of becoming the great and unique disciples of Lord God and going to learn that our phronismas or friend, the diaphragm of your understanding, the discerning of your faculty should be readily available to be running swift enough in performing nothing but the will of Lord God the Father. How much more we have to be readily available for that? First of all, you are not deserving that. Yet God the Father in His grace has deserved you or He has intended you to be there. <laughs> you know what a great grace it is for us. It's really a marvelous grace for us. That though we don't deserve, though we grieve and squelch and wax and lie and resist to Lord God, the Holy Spirit, yet He has called you not to be careless. The pastor teaches not to be careless. The preachers not to be careless. The men who are teaching the word of Lord God not to be careless. Therefore, in Jeremiah 23 and Ezekiel 34, he comes up with his great pain. I haven't sent them at their end. If I would have sent them, they would teach to the entire council of Bible doctrine, which is not and never happening in our pulpits today, because the altar of the Lord God haven't been repaired. They've broken it down. But Elijah was not silent. He first goes to repair the altar of the Lord God, which has been broken down. 
The things pertaining to his ministry which are broken down, it meant to say what? According to the pressure of man in his head, he comes to design his own doctrines. And those doctrines which they have been designed are making the real purpose of the altar to be crashed out. They are making the real purpose of my Lord God to not be fulfilled. Therefore, what did the first thing Elijah did? He goes to put back once again those pulpits, those altars to be repaired. And today the first work what we have in the church is to repair, repair, repair the pulpits. We cannot be careless. Every breath is accountable in the presence of Lord God the Father. Far less we think of every day, every breath, every breath. You cannot be careless. You have to be mindful about His Word. You have to be mindful about His will. You have to be mindful about His desire. You have to be mindful about the thing which has been looking upon the eyesight of the men, how they have been perishing. As it says in 1 Corinthians 7, as the people would love to read. A married man will love to look how to please his wife. Controversy, again, again, vice versa, the same thing. But if you're not married, he said you can spend time with the Lord God. You'll be looking how to please Lord God. That's what over here, I'm a Leo, meant to say we cannot be careless. We cannot be careless. Our life has not been designed to be careless. As a pastor teaches, it's a double burden. First of all, you have been picked out for eternal work. Not the work of this earth, which is today and tomorrow at the burning of the fire of Lord God will completely be vanished. You're picked up for the work of Lord God. You're picked up for the will of Lord God. You're picked up for the glory of Lord God. And how much thankful we not to be when we consider our life given by Lord God for the glory of His work. How much thankful we need to be. Making our calling and election sure. How much grateful we need to be to the Lord. But yet we are not able to be in the standards of the word of Lord God. All the time we are trying to be careless, 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 careless. Therefore, dear brethren, he said, we cannot be negligent for the work of Lord God. Therefore, he said in verse number 12, Wherefore, I am not negligent to put you always in remembrance. The word remembrance meant to say, hupo memnisco, to put into remembrance, to admonish, to be reminded of. Of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Therefore he said, I think it's meet as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir up your pure minds, to awaken, die agairo, into the, putting you into the remembrance of what, knowing that shortly I must put off, but the word of Lord God alone, which standeth and abideth forever. For that word alone, I will be waiting. That's what he says over here. That's the real principle of this word, agairo. And that's the real purpose of our life to be for Christ. But you know what we're doing today? <laughs> like the Old Testament people who have been looking upon into the standards of such work. They were called to be the perfection, the elation of joy to the entire earth. Though they had double pressure, they continued their work. But we, though we don't have any pressure, we've got before us who can be against us. We are more than conquerors in each and everything. We have the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in us. But we are not even budging an inch. You know why? Because we don't even love to look upon the commandments of the word of Lord God. We don't love even to consider what is the will of Lord God. We don't even consider what is the marvelous glory of Lord God in this church. Eh? Therefore, we are spending our time To think vanity. That's what your life is. Just look, your life is just vanity. You're thinking vanity. You're considering vanity. 
Therefore, the first thing what we need to do, repair the altars, repair the altars, no matter what, repair the altars. The altars have been broken down. So for the word broken down over here in First Kings chapter 18, in verse number 30, for the principle of broken down, the teachers, as you can find, emphasizing that according to the pressures of this life, they have been establishing their own methods of doctrines. Therefore, you can find today many doctrines. The only thing what Christ our Lord of God said, He has designed for mankind to be having upright. What is that upright standards? Exegio my word exegetical standards that is his word if every pastor teacher doesn't come to exegete the passages then don't believe him he's not a pastor for you you may be thinking he's a great orator you may be thinking he's a great fun maker you may be thinking he's a great entertainer clowns in the pulpits if he doesn't know the importance of the word of Lord God to be taught in the interlinear scriptures at least, in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. If he doesn't know that, then make sure he's not having the calling of God for the ministry. Every minister will be diligent enough to go back and cross-check if he's been called by Lord God, if he's been appointed by Lord God, if he's been there to do the will of Lord God. Every day he would come to learn the word of Lord God. Every day he would come to teach the word of Lord God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Because not even a single iota or carrier of we shall let it go. You cannot be careless. You should be so thankful to the Lord God who has given you this privilege of a pastor teacher to preach the truth. In the midst of such great apostasy, the only time what we can find is to now preach this truth. Deal in truth. It's a great privilege for you now. It's a double guarantee you have been elected by the Lord God. So that which you have been elected by the Lord God, by the glory of Lord God, you are teaching to your congregation to make their election and calling sure. And you cannot be careless. You need to repair the altars of the Lord God which have been broken down. You cannot just come over here to time pass yourself. Having to find no other work or job on this earth. You will say that I will become a minister. I will become this. I will become that. And I will love to spend your time in such and such things. That's real stupidity. You're just stupid. If you just think you're really stupid. And yet, God the Father, though you are ending up in such great apostasy of the time, He wants to shine more and more in such darkness. The word of Lord God, only through the controlling, mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlightening, guiding, and leading us according to His will, according to His glory. And that's what we're doing today. We are really spending time in vanity. <laughs> Our life seemeth to be in vanity. Because you are loving vanity. To what extent you are loving vanity, do you know, dear brethren? You are not able to wake up the love of vanity which you are spending in this life. Though the preacher writes his summary in Ecclesiastes 1 2, you are not able to learn. Five times uses the word vanity, 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 vanity. And the purpose of the preacher, the word kolaheth in the Hebrew, it meant to say what? A man with a message. The pictographical representation of that it says from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun the work of the preacher is to make disciples that's the real meaning of kolahet in the pictographical representation 
And what does he say? Why vanity five times? He said, if your body is not associated to be a disciple to the word of Lord God, then your life whatsoever you have been engaged with, then your thinking whatsoever you have been occupied with, then your purpose of life with whatsoever you have been realizing it. He says, it's vanity, 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 because you haven't associated your body to be the word of Lord God. You haven't given your body to be the will of Lord God. You haven't become your body to the marvelous glory of Lord God. Therefore, you can find in Ezekiel chapter 28 in verse number 15 emphasizing till iniquity was found in it. The iniquity was to be having distorted thinking from discipleship program. And for us the church age is said in John 1, 11 and 12 to them he gave the power to become the sons of God called to be technon as disciples to the word of Lord God. By default, we are now called to be the disciples. So now if your body is not been taking up your cross every day and coming to learn the word of Lord God in the time given for you, then just imagine how can you make your calling and election sure? You think you can stay on this earth for a thousand years? No man could stay. It is 969, Methuselah. Not even thousand he reached. The outlived one of all. So you can say, tomorrow I will come. If I have a convenient time, like the way how Felix could say, you'd say, I will come again, I will listen. No, dear brethren, now, today is the day of salvation. Now is the time of accepted salvation. And if you don't make up your calling and election, sure. You know not what is your life. You know not what is your thinking. You know not, I will end up your life. So two hours, 40 minutes, when you will make up your calling and election, sure. Every day, you will love to spend your time in vanity. Every day, you run behind the money in this world. Every day, for the lustful patterns of the old sin nature, you love to live your life. Every day, if you live that, you're going to get your life. No, dear brethren, you cannot. Every day, give back to Lord God the Father, two hours, 40 minutes, every day, every day, every day. Make up your calling and election show every day. Make it up. Don't spend your time for vanity. Make it up. These are the days of great darkness and apostasy. Greater will be the revolution of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The greater the darkness, the greater the apostasy. <laughs> the brighter the revolution of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to concentrate the days of evil. To concentrate how wise we ought to be in purchasing the time, how wise we ought to be in learning the truth, how wise we ought to be in performing the marvelous glory of God the Father. Greater. And that's what we're doing today. <laughs> Spending our time in vanity. <laughs> Looking our time for stupidity. And leaning in this world, which is unstable, unreality, to say this is the life we will continue. Anything you need to have in this earth should have a firm foundation, solid base. Though the heaven and the earth will vanish off, his word will abide forever. There could be no greater firm foundation or solid base apart from the word of Lord God. As ministers, we cannot be negligent to lay it down for you in the truth. As disciples, though you have been convicted and then go for correction and then you have been disciplined to look and learn the Ridasco teaching of the word of Lord God that is left to you. Because we are blowing the trumpet to make you to realize the truth. And if you still make your life to be blinded by the details of this world and not to get yourself separated to the will of Lord God the Father, what is that life worth for or accounted for? Dear brethren, think over these issues. 
Life is too short to spend our time and life in vanity. The calling of the Lord God is too large. Therefore, it has been called as Anna calling of God, Haggai's calling of Lord, Aurana's calling of Lord God, high, holy, heavenly calling in Christ. We don't deserve it. God the Father has given us to enjoy that. And why you want to still spend your time in stupidity? Think about these issues. If the people of Israelites, Lamentations 2.15 emphasizes they were the elation of the earth. Under extreme pressure, they evangelized the world. That's what we can find. The 40 authors writing the Bible for us. Than like King Cyrus, Ayat, the unclean bird, compared to why can't we go to perform? The parash work of Lord God, distinct teaching of Lord God, in the clear understanding of the will of Lord God to the mindset of this people. As that Gentile nations being chosen by Lord God before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in performing His marvelous, matchless, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Because we have been given to enjoy our life in the great pallid wonders of His Word. We don't want anything else on this earth. Apart from fulfilling his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace to be all. Live for Christ if ever you live. Die for Christ if ever you die. Make your calling and election sure in the Lord. Don't spend your time in vanity. Don't spend your time in stupidity. Don't spend your time not to be mature enough in the word of Lord God. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Christ, my Lord, my God. And being in comparative religion studies of your world, don't forget that Christ is the end of all human wisdom, because all scripture is God prayed. We are called now just to be not elation. But the delight of Lord God, as Ezekiel's wife was called, the delight of his eyes, something far greater than Ezekiel's wife, the church to be his beloved. My beloved is mine, and I am his. And why do we spend our time in vanity? How much more we have to be a great joy to God the Father, if Israel were compared to be the friends, Christ compares the church to be his wife, to sit with him in his throne. And we know very well, it is not a homo marriage. It is between the opposite sex, where they go to recreate themselves. And the church has been called to be that great quintessence of souls, Recreation to the will of God the Father, His Son, for His third title, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us, to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of his soul that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That's the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. 
May we teach our learned of Christ to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the past to teach us the greatest majesty of Caruso, Thon Lagar. Herald the word in season and out of season, because the Dharma to my witnesses where they have been called. The number one Dharma to my witnesses in willing trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma to my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not very besides nature, the entire angelic course will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us, to the praise of his glory, in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, what a marvelous revolution we have a lot to make it up from Second Peter, making our calling and election sure. Lord, being thankful for the people who have been accounted to be picked up by you, making our voice to be a word, and preaching to the people your pallid wonders of your glory, making our election sure, O oh Lord. We make even others also to come for your calling and election to be sure, so that they could realize your fear, they could realize your love, and they could realize the value of this true life in this and yet, O oh Lord, much of the people in the present Christendom have failed to carry their cross every day before you. The reasons being many, to emphasize the point in simple terms, pure blindness that has occurred to them in this world, the leisure of time being spent in vanity rather than searching truth in reality. That the Father, you have been so much grateful for us to realize and to understand this world so that we could become thy word, we could become the pal of wonders, and we could become that which has been associated for us to live a life in truth in this church. Having this great call in the church of the Lord, we pray the mentoring minister of love God, the Holy Spirit to enlighten the challenge and to bless us by this message, which are prepared and kept for us in every past on this particular day. Christ in the most solid